Hi, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. This is Siwe here. I am a PhD candidate from the National University of Singapore. My research is focused on general artificial intelligence, robotics, especially for robust manipulation tasks. So today I'm going to introduce my recent work called App Initial Particle-Based Object Manipulation. Basically, we care about the general robot manipulation problem for primitive tasks, such as robot grasping, robot pushing, robot stacking, and placing tasks. There are many existing challenges in the robot manipulation problem. The first one I would like to mention is the visual perception. How can a robot handle unseen objects with the complex visual appearance? such as a translucent cap, a translucent object. How does a robot can, can find out the geometric structure, the shape of the object for the unseen objects, such as this dinosaur here? The visual perception is still a very big challenge in the manipulation. Second, I would like to mention about the dynamics reasoning. How can we understand this world model better? and hence provides better solutions. How can we predict the future states as, as reasons about the different consequences brought by different actions? For example, if we are going to grasp this hammer, if we don't see this hammer before, we would like to think, okay, this hammer is evenly mass distributed as we may grasp the center of this hammer. However, if we are grasping the center of this hammer, the hammer may rotate because, this, because the head is much heavier. If we don't understand the dynamics, we can never predict such consequences of, of the future states of the grasping effects. The next point is the real-world data. How can we make the algorithm work in the real world with realistic amounts of real-world data? Data collecting can be very expensive and time consuming. Hundreds of robot hours can be spent on collecting data. How can we improve and avoid on this? Carrying with all those challenges, we have a three dimensional metric. First is the dynamics reasoning, how well we understand the dynamics. Another dimension is the visual perception, how can we deal with the images, the, the visual inputs? Another dimension is the data efficiency. The traditional analytical planning approaches, they often require known mesh model to perform the post estimation and planning. It's pretty good at the dynamics reasoning because, it's, because it has a dynamics model to reason about the future. And it requires no data, so it's pretty high data efficiency. But it cannot handle the unseen objects which, with the visual input. The recent data-driven approach is, in, is the reverse. It's pretty, good at, it's pretty good at handling the visual input, but it lacks the dynamics understanding. It cannot reason about the consequences of different actions. On top of that, it requires a lot, a lot of real-world data. So the question is, can we find a new approach that connects the visual perceptions and the dynamics reasoning at the same time without a lot of data? Let's look at this closer. We have the visual perception challenge and we have the dynamics reasoning challenge. The data-driven approaches is very good at addressing the visual perception challenge by training the neural network with, with all those C and encoders. But the analytical approaches is, is pretty good at the dynamics reasoning. How can we connect them together? The answer is that we can use the particle states to connect the both the visual perceptions and the dynamics reasoning. We are proposing prompt which is called the particle-based object manipulation. The key is about the particle state, which is a set of particles inside a 3D space with different attributes. It's the particle representation has several advantages. First is the visual perceptions. 
The particle states can be easily easily acquired from the multi-view RGB images with the methods we proposed in our paper from the multi-view perceptions. Second, we can connect to the dynamics model. We can perform the dynamics reasoning by connecting to a particle-based simulator. For example, if we are performing a grasping task with an incorrect angle, the robot's grasping may result in a slipover, which is a failure case in the grasping task. However, if we can reason about the dynamics, we can gradually find out the best actions to perform and complete the task. Third advantage is about the generality. We believe that the particle representation has great potentials to represent not only rigid body objects, but also deformable objects, such as cloth and liquid. Given all the advantages mentioned here, people may ask, the particle representation is so powerful and is not new nowadays, why people cannot do it in the past and why we can do it now? The answer is that we can, nowadays we can afford much more computing powers. In, with the largely increased computing power, we can afford to compute on the particle representation, which leads to many benefits to the robot manipulation tasks. Before going into some technical details, I would like to show some, a short video of, of prompt. Here we are rotating our arms around this object to reconstruct the particles. And after that, by using the particles, we are performing the planning. After that, we execute in the real world. Here is, an, the, here is an, another example, which is a translucent object. We can also use examples of grasping various objects. Here, let's go to some of the details of our approach. This is the overview structure of our approach called prompt. The first step we are going to perform is online data gathering, where we have eye in hand camera mounted on the gripper of the robot. We are rotating this arm around this object to collect the RGB images. With the RGB images collect, we are performing the object foreground segmentation to get the masking images of objects, which is the which is a sequence of masking images of from different angles. With the masking images, we can perform the multi-view particle reconstruction to estimate the particle state, to reconstruct the particle state's outline, and with the reconstruct particle states, we can connect with a particle-based simulator to perform the planning with MPC planner. After the best actions are found. In the simulator, we, can, we will execute the actions in the real world. After interacting with these objects, we can collect a trajectory of several steps. By using the observations from each step, we can use those trajectories. We can use the trajectory of actions to update some of the hidden properties of the particle states, such as the center of the mass the mass distribution of the particle states. Let's have a closer look of the online particle generator. Basically, we want to have a generator that outputs the particle states, which is a set of points inside the 3D space. First, we see with the, for each binary masking images, we are sampling a set of points uniformly from the ground truth binary masking images. 
And we also have a particle scenarios in the 3D space and we can project that we can reproject that set of particles onto the same image plane. By using the k nearest chamfer distance, we can minimize the distance between the reproject points and the sample's ground truth points. So k nearest chamfer distance is a variance we propose based on the standard chamfer distance to compute the distance between the two set of points. By minimizing this distance, we can we can reconstruct the particles online in a se few seconds. Here we show some of the example. The results shows that we are we does not only work in the simulation, but we can work in the real world. Here are some daily items that we reconstruct online in the real world. Planning, we are using the model predictive control to perform the planning with the particle-based simulator, such as NVIDIA Flex. Here is the overview of how the planner is working. Basically, we are using the cross-entropy MPC controller to find out the best actions. We first initialize uh, the action distribution with a prior distribution, such as uh, perform the grasping around the particles we generate. After this, we are optimizing those actions with total i iterations. For each iteration, we are sampling j action candidates. For each action candidate, we are going to roll out in the simulator to find out, to predict what are the next states and compute the rewards for each candidate. After this week, are uh, selecting the best k actions to update the action distribution by updating the means and the variance of the action distribution. After i rounds, we can gradually find out the good actions to execute in the real world. To perform the closed-loop robot manipulation tasks, we have to re-estimate the object's configurations given the image up image observations update. The idea is simple. Given the inputs masking images, the inputs observed masking images, and the reconstruct particles, we fixed this set of reconstruct particles and only varies the object configuration parameters, position parameters xyz and orientation parameters theta. Here is an example. We have the observation images on the left and we can reproject our particle states onto the same image plane and we can get the reprojection x prime. By minimizing the distance between the reproject images x prime and the observation images x, we can gradually find the best estimation of the position parameters x, y, z and the orientation parameters theta. Here is another example of how we can estimate the mass distribution. The idea is very similar. The goal is to handle the uneven mass distribution objects such as the hammer. The input is the masking images in time sequence, which means now we interact with objects several times and we have a sequence of masking images. The output is the particle mass distribution M in terms of the mean and the variance of the center of the object. The idea is similar. We want to minimize the distance between the observed images and the reproject images for every time step. How can we get the reproject images x prime? We leverage on the particle-based dynamics, where phi is the dynamics model that takes in the current particle state the mass distribution and the robot's action. Rolling out forwards one step, we can get the particle state as t plus one, and we can reproject this particle, new particle state to get the x prime on the image, which is the images. By minimizing the distance between x prime and x, we can gradually find the best estimation of mass distribution. Here are the experiment setup. As you can tell that we test our approach uh, on the daily items with four categories of objects. 
there are simple items, there are daily items, as we have complex items as well as translucent items. The results shows that on all the categories, we can work well in the real world and outperforms the baseline on all the categories. Push, grasp, and place. We also show a good generalization of our approach to various different sort of the manipulation tasks. For example, here we are doing a placing task without understanding the center of mass, the robot fails, and now we are trying to interact with the hammer to find out where is the center of the mass. After that, we can complete the task successfully. Lastly, I want to reiterate about the particle representations. The particle representations may be the future of the robust manipulations, which requires no predefined 3D model, no large offline training, and it also generalizes to various manipulation tasks. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. All right, cool. So that was the talk, and uh, we have him here now for a Q&A session. And thanks for being here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you for providing us the chance of speaking out of our work. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was pretty cool, by the way, the last video, just just, just wanted to say uh, what people think of questions. Like the fact that the robot had to figure it out, man, wouldn't know how to write that kind of, I wouldn't know how to write that kind of code. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks. So if there are any questions, just feel free to feel free to ask. Yeah. All right. First question is in. Is it possible to distinguish the material, uh, in parentheses, density of different parts of the object? Um, yes, we are doing the similar things, but uh, in terms of the center, the mass distribution, in terms of the center of the mass. So basically, we are estimating the center of the mass of the object. Uh, for example, the hammer, the hammer have the different densities uh, where the head is very heavy, which is the metal, and the, uh, the handle, which is the wood, which is very light. So this is the case uh, of different part of materials, but in our work, we are estimating the center of the mass um, instead of the uh, to different instead of to distinguish the different materials yeah but this is very close uh, so in this world probably the answer is not uh, we don't we don't do it explicitly yeah um, are you using uh, data mining algorithms in this process data mining algorithms um do can you, uh, can you explain more what do you mean data mining algorithms like uh what type of data mining algorithms you are referring about are you saying that uh, do we use the data to train our policy um uh, do, do you mind to give more information about that Um, okay, so basically for our approach, we don't use any um, grasping or pushing data because we're testing our approach on those grasping and pushing experiments. And usually what the, the, the deep learning approaches, they will, they will have many try and errors and they collect the trajectory of grasping, they collect trajectories of pushing and with the action and, the, and states they observed. So by using those data, they are gradually to train their, their policies such as, for example, they can they can try to learn a Q-value function, they can try to learn a value function to get their policy, but we are not doing so. We are using another approach, which is to perform planning on the, on, on the known particle dynamics model, yeah, which requires no offline training data. Oh, so the next question, um, can you briefly mm -hmm. explain again how objects like the hammer uh, with non-homogeneous material density are handled. Okay, um, basically we are trying to estimate the center of the mass 
because uh, at the very first step stage we only assume a uniform mass distribution and we will roll out the same actions which is performing the real world uh, and we will roll out the same action in the simulation to find out what's the expect state and we by comparing the expect state in the simulation and the observed state in the real world we can find out the discrepancy uh, and we, we want to minimize that distance by tuning the parameters which is the for example the mass distribution and the center of the mass yeah Actually, I, I have a question as well. Um, mm -hmm. was, does this work if, let's say, you have like an object that can roll, like you know, like a rolling pin or like a ball or something? Because mm -hmm. then the object moves around, right? So, mm -hmm. um, have you guys tried doing like handling those kind of objects? Um, not yet. Um, this type of object is very interesting and uh, it's another level of difficulty. And we are trying to handle in such objects in my next project. Yeah, so this is ah, what okay, currently cool. we are doing right now by using the particle states. Yeah. Right. So even like for example, like bottles of like let's say bottles of liquid or something like that, because like it, it can shift after interaction, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. I was just wondering whether yes. you guys tried doing that uh, already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the direction we're working out. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, so the next question in chat. Uh, so it's handled by improving the mass distribution by observing the behavior uh in rollout in real world? Yes, yes. So it's a cross loop manipulation. All right. Uh, how many figures of different angles does the proposed method need to reconstruct the 3D particles? Are there any factors that will cause reconstruction failures? Okay. Um, yes. Uh, this is a very good question. So in my experience, um, in, my, in our experiments, usually we use about 70 images from a short video, uh, about few seconds video, and so we just get the 70 images from multiple angles. Uh, this is probably sufficient for to reconstruct um, the 3D objects. Uh, in fact, you can use fewer images. That's fine, but you may have a lesser quality. Uh, you may have a lower quality. And um, any factors that cause the reconstruction failure? Yes, um, because we are using a third. Uh, we are using the foreground segmentation to get the masking images. And this work is a pure. Uh, it's based on the other people's work, which is called the unit. And and this unit is not specifically training for. For, for this type of task. So it's in sometimes, sometimes it may get, um, we, we may have a very noisy masking images. In that case, uh, the reconstruction may have a uh, low quality. Yeah. Uh, would the algorithm be able to generalize for n robot arms in which you don't need to look at one point for center of mass, but rather n points for grasping it? How can that be generalized for? Oh, sorry, I'm not very sure about the question. So, are you asking can our can our algorithm generalize to n robot arms? Uh, is this the main question or or the center of mass? Can you explain more? Okay, so if you are asking whether whether this our um our, my answer is that uh yes, we can generalize to n robot arms because. We are not learning end to end, and we are not learning based on the specific robots. So we are doing the planning um, on the on the particle states. So basically, means uh, with a planner, we can we can replace our robots model by any models, right? You can you can use the flash, you can use panda, and you can use any models. So the answer is yes, we can generalize to different robots. Technically, we're supposed to go on a break now, but if you guys still have questions, um, and you know, as long as we're still here willing to answer, we can we can just keep keep going with that. <laughs> um, there, there is a question here. Uh, as the optimization of the particle generator function makes use uh, of shape mm -hmm. from silhouette cues, is it true that there might be difficulties in reconstructing shapes with concavities? Okay, this is a very good question. Um, so basically, our approach is very similar to the shape from silhouettes. And uh, basically, they are they are sharing the same concept, and it's also suffering from the the concavities problems. Which means if we are trying to reconstruct a bowl, and so the limitation is that we we will treat this bowl as a solid space. Yeah, we will treat this bowl as a solid object instead of an empty object. This is because we are lack of the depth information. We don't have we don't know how 
uh, we don't know the depth uh, depth information about the boat, and we can only try to estimate the shape from the silhouette uh, from from the masking images. So that's the limitation. But that limitation um, in practice can be addressed by using a depth sensor. Uh, but imagine we can have a, we have a depth sensor, and we can get the distance for each particles, and we can reconstruct the full shape of the boat. Yeah. Uh, and turns out that I actually missed the question slightly further up. Uh, mm -hmm. It says, uh, hi, I missed most of your presentation. As far as I can tell, you use pushing to infer center of mass, but isn't this, this a proxy for contact slash friction of object on the table? Suppose now I wrap a sticky rubbery cling wrap onto the handle of a hammer. Clearly pushing will produce a radically different outcome and produce a different center of mass. Okay, uh, sorry, let me read the question. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, Okay, uh, this is a uh, okay for this question. I would say that uh, we have a pretty good, uh, we have a reasonably good uh, assumption on the frictions, on the friction coefficients, uh, and, and that's why we don't do the objects like they can roll, they can roll in on the table, and so for the friction, uh, we assume is reasonably high such that when the robot arm stops, and the, when the gripper stops, the object stops. Yeah. So that's the that's the case in our experiment. So in that case, we can uh, we can we can focus on the mass distribution instead of the friction uh, effects. Yeah. All right. Um. There's another question in chat. Have you considered using lidar for the particle representation? Uh, uh I would say it's not. Uh, instead of it's not lidar because lidar is for a uh, far away distance measuring. Uh, I was I would recommend a depth sensor. So. Uh, yes, depth sensor is a good, good measure to do in practice. But combining with the depth sensor and the reconstruction approach, uh, we can have a better reconstruction. Yeah, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Oh, uh, and he says, uh, have uh, there's another question here? Have you tried mm -hmm. to interact with objects with soft surfaces or objects that can change shape, like an iron chain? Yes, um, I would say this is a very good question because this is our first work working on the particle states. And as we all we know, that particle states uh, has a very good advantage on the deformable objects uh, as well as the liquid. So, uh, that's, um, so that's the direction we are working on. So our, our next project, we are working on the deformable objects uh, such as the, the iron chain and deformable objects such as the ropes. Yeah. 